The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 316 Follow You Well, Starlight, Maple asked, glancing back at the filly. Want to see if we can get some sleep? I don't know about you, but I feel better already. Starlight finally released her hold on Gerardo's beak, leaving the griffin sputtering. Okay, she decided. It wasn't like she had anything better to do. Meh, Valet yawned, stretching. If I wasn't beat up, I'd go for a recon flight to check this place out. New places are spooky. But that's probably off the table, so... Meh. She started heading for the railing, preparing to jump off herself. I need to find someone whose room I can nap in without feeling awkward about making them feel awkward. Maybe I'll just go lurking around the old-fashioned way. See ya! Maple turned to the stairs below deck, standing unsteadily with Starlight at her side. Gerardo loudly chimed in. I suppose I'll do some scouting of my own, then. Do alert me if anything goes catastrophically wrong. Noted, Starlight yawned. Suddenly, with an almost inaudible ruffle of feathers, a dark form descended onto the deck. There was a flash of white as Metriona finished tucking her wings back beneath her cloak. Hello, she said. I see you're back from Anridge. Maple frowned in confusion. Have we met? Gerardo proudly stepped forward, bowing with a wing to his chest. This is Metriona, he introduced. Shinespark's mother. I believe I recall mention of her being sent to Riverfall to lie low while the events with the dam played out. Sorry if I've met you and don't remember. Maple shook her head and nodded in respect. Can you tell me of the state of things there? Matriona asked. I've heard nothing since I left half a week ago, aside from seeing the flood here. Is Sosa... Gerardo hung his head. Sosa has been obliterated, and the skyport ruined as well in the fighting that ensued. Ambassador Herman was the culprit and is dead. I know not the state of the defense force, but Erenby stayed behind to administer the city's recovery. Shinespark and Dior are both with us, while Gunga, Gigavolt, and Granada all perished. Matriona's face was unreadable beneath the shadow of her hood. Shinespark and Dior are here, though? Indeed, Gerardo nodded. Dior, I recently relieved of a shift piloting this craft, and he should be slumbering below. He seems a jolly fellow. Shinespark regrettably went below when we first embarked, and I haven't seen a hair of her since. She hasn't been taking recent events very well. Thank you, Matriona said in a whisper-like voice, turning and gliding to the stairs so smoothly she could have actually been flying. She's certainly the quiet type, Gerardo remarked once she was out of sight. Or you might be the loud type, Maple suggested, trying to hide the latent exasperation in her voice. Gerardo winked. Well, I have been known to be central to the atmosphere of many a celebration. Regardless, I think I'll be taking my leave as well. Good night, or what remains of it. Ho ho! He flapped away, leaving Maple and Starlight alone on the ship deck. A distant night breeze brushed the treetops far above, but the air around the boat was still, the floor bobbing gently as the ship rocked against the current. Across the riverbank, riverfall lay, dark and quiet. And Maple yawned. Bed, she suggested, feeling like she might be ready after all. Bed, Starley agreed, and together they stumbled towards the stairs. Valet slivered through the darkness, using her shadow sneaking to travel quickly and seamlessly across town. She had a destination in mind, or rather a target, following the fresh scent of the only mare out that night that happened to be covered in strongly smelling grease and oil. Amber was fast, though, and she didn't think she was catching up. It didn't help that the roadways were made of some kind of weird enchanted glass that was filled with rocks. She knew how to parse the strange altered vision that came with sneaking, but having rocks in the way when swimming along the ground behind the glass made it a hundred times worse. The traction enchantment that was ostensibly so ponies wouldn't slip in the rain didn't seem to know what to do when she was beneath the glass and behaved erratically, leading to her sometimes swimming freely and other times feeling like she was bathing in syrup. Eventually, she just climbed down and continued on hoof, braving her limp and the lower speed, so she wouldn't worry about getting stuck. Meh. Mwah. Meh. Bored, she tried to kick at an imaginary pebble as she walked, but not only were the streets meticulously clean, the enchantment grabbed her hoof and all the momentum that went to the swing halted, sending a painful jolt into her shoulder. Ow! Bananas! 
Frustrated, she kicked at the ground, stomping, only to get caught again and have her muzzle slammed against the glass. Dumb road! She rubbed at her nose, not bothering to get up, wondering if it had been visibly compacted. Were you following me? Amber's amused voice asked from above her. Valet looked up, seeing the mare standing over her, having appeared from nowhere. She was still wet, this time from tip to tail and smelling of flowery soap rather than mechanical things, with a coat covered in the spiky, fuzzy look of being toweled halfway and then left to dry on its own. Her mane still trailed droplets, most of which landed on Valet's forehead. Oh! Amber slowly noticed, then jumped back, having no trouble whatsoever with the glass. Sorry! Miss Rhoda stupid, Valet muttered, ignoring the question. See if you still save that when it saves you from falling on your butt while it's still raining, Amber replied. What are you doing here, though? Valet glanced at her without lifting her head from the ground. Here, Riverfall, or here following you? Amber shuffled, suddenly awkward. Well, I meant following me, but I guess if the other is something you need to say, eh. Valet rolled to her hooves. Because I'm bored, have nothing better to do, and felt like doing what I wanted. Besides, I figured I'd see what this place looks like and decided you knew you were around. Oh, Amber deflated in relief. So it's not about... I mean, I was kind of staring at you earlier and... Oh, yeah, you were, Valet agreed, breaking into a grin. Never seen a bat before. Amber flushed, but the question gave her an out. I hadn't seen a griffin before, Gerardo, but I had at least heard of him. Are you... Can you fly? With these? Valet stretched her good wing. When they're not busted up, yeah. You like them? Amber stepped back, sensing a loaded question. What do you say you like? Valet raised an eyebrow. Anything you don't like about them? Amber tilted her head. Huh? As in, Valet flashed her teeth. Oh, that's stupidly hot, but it's also the baddest of bad news, and I'm sure there's something unspeakably terrible about anything that could possibly look like that? Um, what? Amber looked confused. Where are you coming from with this? Is this a cultural thing I'm not aware of? When we were raising our eyebrows and grinning, usually that means, nah, Valet gave a disarming grin. Just means you've been living in a much tinier world than I'm from. Or maybe bigger, who knows? I guess Riverfall doesn't really have a problem with me. Thanks for being honest, by the way. Should we have a problem with you? Amber frowned in concern. Valet shrugged. I read sure did. Don't know if it was warranted in the end because I saved their rears and that makes up for a bunch of civil pranks in my book. Ironflings doesn't, apparently you don't, and really, I prefer it that way. Well, is there an important reason they didn't like you? Amber asked tentative. Not one I can say without sounding super edgy. Valet glanced back in the direction of the boats then at Amber. Mostly I just mess with ponies, leaving banana peels in the road, sending flirty letters to the wives of my subordinates, occasionally haunting ponies, uh, just enough to keep the population under hooves. I'm not talking about me, though. I'm talking bad ponies in general. You don't have a problem with the fangs, the ears, the creepy wings, and slitted eyes? Amber shook her head, still looking confused. I don't think so. You still look like a pony to me. Okay. Cool. All I needed to know. Grinning, Valet started to step and almost immediately tripped and caught herself. Ah, bananas. This road hates me, and I hate this road. Anyway, have fun with whatever you're doing. Tomorrow, we should hang out. Amber grinned back. Agreed. End of chapter 316